Hello and welcome to this quick tip with me, Tim Clapham from hellolux.com. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can create this really simple halftone effect um, within a few minutes using the remesh tool in Cinema. Now I want to keep this procedural, so I'm going to work with the text spline, but the first thing I want to do is look at how we can take the caps here and make them into some nice regular topology. I've got this in an extrude with an offset of zero. You can see the caps are set to Engon. We could choose regular grid. You can see that works kind of, but uh, here at the bottom of the L, for example, there aren't enough points, so the grid is not working correctly. But we can fix that by changing our text spline to be subdivided. And if we set the maximum length to a certain value, say five, we need to make sure that our regular grid is set to the same size. And then you kind of get a pretty good grid, um, but you notice towards the edges and things, you do still get some very thin triangles, etc. But for most deformation and things, this works pretty well. But I want to get something even more regular than this. So what we can do is we can use the remesh. Press Shift C to bring up Commander and type remesh. Hold Alt and add the remesh to our extrude. You can see immediately we get a very nice even topology with some very even sized polygons. We can change the mesh density um, even higher or lower. So if we set it to 25, you can see we still get a pretty good representation of our model um, with much lower poly count. And if we set it up to say 500, you can see we get quite a nice dense mesh. And this is good for, you know, growing vertex maps and things like that, where you need all of the points quite close together. You can even set it higher to so something like a thousand. Now the remesh has an additional feature with this density map here. So you can actually use um, a vertex map. So let's just disable the remesh for a moment. If we right click on the extrude, choose other tags and vertex map. And then in the field section, drag the text spline itself, just for an example. And if we select that, and rather than choosing um, a long, let's choose radius. The resulting vertex map has values from 100 to zero based on the spline and the radius we set. So now if we drag that vertex map into the density map field on our remesh, and we enable the remesh, we're gonna use that vertex map as a multiplier. So where we have our mesh density at 1000 is multiplying and we're getting more polys at the edges. If we use a lower value, I have the inverse effect, and you can see now the polygons at the edges are less dense. So that's pretty handy, and you can use all sorts of things in your vertex map, but for now we're not going to use that, so let's remove it. I'm going to just delete that vertex map tag. So now if we select the remesh, you notice we've been using the Z remesher. If we switch to instant mesh, you can see we get this kind of cool pixelated result. We can choose keep outline if we want, um, which gives us that mesh, but really, if you want that, you should use the Z remesher. But I'm kind of keen for this pixelated result, and because it's procedural, we can change this to whatever we want. It would work with a logo, but I'm going to just use um, wingdings. <laughs> um, I think if we put in a square bracket here, we can get a yin yang, and we can just work with that nice simple shape to explore. And you can see that we have all of these separate polygons. We can come to our remesh, and we can increase the density if we want more. Let's say 250. You can see now we kind of get this pixel art, um, but we can of course control all those polygons. So I'm going to drop that in a null and I'm going to come down, just add in a Mo extrude. You can see that it then extrudes each one of those polygons. And at the moment it's set to four extrusion steps. So let's just set that to one to keep this simple. If we switch to the transform, you can see it's coming out five centimeters, but we can scale that down. And we're just scaling the end resulting polygon and you can end up with this kind of cool result. Okay, I'm going to set the scale to be 0.6. If you hold control with that highlighted, it will affect all fields. Let's add in a plane effector because the Mo extrude will work with effectors rather than position Y. We could affect the Z position you see, and that's going to move that in and out. Um, I'm going to set that to be five just so that it moves it a tiny bit. I'm also going to add some scale, uniform scale, and just set that to be 0.5. So it's going to just scale them all up a bit. We come to the fields and add in a random field. You can see now that that's randomizing those values. Let's just hide that random field and rename the effector. Come down to the field settings and I'm just gonna change the noise scale to 25. Let's give it some animation 50 and loop 250 frames. Now you can see that as we scrub through, the extrusion changes as does the scale of the end polygons. Um, if we switch to the remapping, let's come down and change the minimum here to be minus 100. So we get more range, um, but you can see it's actually clamping those values. So we need to just unclamp our list here. And there we go. Now you can see we've got a much wider range. 
that's the result for that which is a kind of cool effect um, there are lots of different ways you can use this let's just come back to our polys if we select the null at this time let's come to our MoGraph menu and add in a poly effects so poly effects allows you to use effectors on polygons add a plane effector so let's call this poly scale come to the parameter uncheck position enable scale uniform scale and here we can scale those polygons down slightly so let's say 0.5 okay and now if we come to fields and we add in a linear field I'm going to set that to be plus y and then we can just do a little gradient up through the logo or the icon um, so that they scale down from the bottom towards the top um, let's just grab that linear field reduce the size slightly there we go and if we come back to our perspective we can hide that now and you can see that they've scaled down a little bit so now if we enable our mode extrude it's the same as it was before but of course now we have a little tiny gap between each of them okay um, we could change the order of these which means that the extrude will be executed first and then you can see the poly effects happens afterwards and could also create some pretty interesting results that way especially if you've got multiple levels of extrusion let's just come back to the poly effects for a moment select the remesh and at the moment you can see polygon type quad we can also choose triangles and that gives us a sort of more honeycomb um, type result where we've got all of the tessellated triangles we can still change the density etc and um, achieve the same sort of result but this time of course we've got all of these triangles there we go and you can see again very similar but different really quick result um, pretty much one trick pony but still kind of cool and useful especially as it's so procedural and you can easily just change the resolution or the actual type and everything will just update automatically now let's disable this mo extrude switch back to quad dominant i'm going to select the poly effects and add in a plane effector so I'm going to use this to create some random scale. So I'll call this polyrand scale. Come down to the parameters and let's enable uniform scale. I'm going to set that to be minus one. Switch to fields and let's add in another random field. And this time we're going to set the scale to be much smaller. Five with an animation speed of 50 and a loop of 250. I'm going to add in a curve layer above. And what I want to do here is just crush these values and give it a sort of dynamic curve. This is going to make it feel a little bit more digital where those values change rapidly. If we switch off that curve layer, you can see the random field is hardly affecting the scale, but now it's making a big difference. I'm actually going to pull these up a bit more so the more of them are larger. It feels pretty good. Now, if we come in close and have a look, you can see we've got square polygons. So if we want, we could take this whole group and just drop that into a subdivision surface. And now we have, well, almost circles um, to the average eye. They're going to look pretty much circular. They are slightly off. Um, let's just hide that random field. And now you can see we've got exactly the same result, but with this sort of halftone effect. Now, unfortunately, poly effects won't support color. So if we want to do that, we need to use a fracture object. So we can drop everything into a fracture and under the object tab, choose explode segments. Now that's going to internally make a separate object out of all of those polygons. So you can see we do get quite a big performance here. So you can either set your subdivision surface to be disabled or you can just set it to be zero in the editor. I'm um, coming back to the fracture. Let's add in another plane effector. I'm just going to call this one color. Come down to the parameter tab. Let's switch off position. Just make sure that color mode is set to fields color, which it is by default. Under fields, we can actually reuse this random field, drag and drop this in here. If we select that, come to the color remap and let's set that to gradient. Now we're driving the color with this effector. We need to come back to this effector here and just switch off color on that field. Now if we come back to our color, you can see that we still have it enabled here. We can actually switch off parameter if we need to, but there aren't any. But the reason I do it this way, I prefer to have different attributes on different effectors so that then I can easily use that color effector on any other elements in my scene. Okay, let's get this ready for rendering. But first of all, I'm going to just add in a plain object. So I've got a simple background. Let's set that to plus Z and then move it back just a couple of units. And then I am going to just switch over to uh, my nodes layout and create two Redshift standard materials. I'll create one and duplicate it. Okay, I'm going to put one on the plane and one on the fracture object. 
Let's call this one floor and we'll just call this one dots. With the floor material, I just want this to be really white. So I'm going to set that to 100% white and I'm going to make it quite reflective with an IOR of 2. With the dots in the node editor, let's add in a color user data. And what we're going to do with this, we're going to read the MoGraph color. So if we just select that in the attribute manager under presets, choose MoGraph color, and you can see that just got cut off. Sorry about that. Let's just link that into color. Now there is an issue with linear workflow because that's a linear value. I'm not sure you're going to see it in the viewport, but let's have a look. Um, switch off that plane for now. So what we can do to fix this essentially is use a color correct and we just need to do a gamma adjustment. So if we drop that on the wire and we set our gamma to be 0.444, that will sort of reverse that curve for us and we'll get a much more even distribution of our values. I'm going to drop a ramp onto here as well, just so we can colorize all of those values. And just for the efficiency, I'm going to choose a preset. And I want quite a lot of colors, so I'm going to use this bluey greeny one. It feels a little bit digital. For the dots, let's get rid of that reflection. Okay, and I'm also going to pipe that into the emission color. So on the material, we need to set our emission weight, and I'm going to set that to be 2. Okay, and if we just enable our plane, you can see that's very illuminated. Because we don't have any lights, it's adding the default light. We can switch that off in our settings under globals. Let's disable that and restart the render view. And there we go. And you can see now we have the result at the end. So we've got these luminant dots. You can see they're illuminating the surface underneath. I'm just going to reduce the roughness on that material down slightly. So you can see their reflection as well. Now, obviously, they are square. So if we enable our subdivision surface, we're going to get those round dots again. And there we go. And there you can see the result. Now, of course, this is um, all based on a text spline, but it will work with vector, artwork, a logo, etc. But the great thing about this is we can just come in here and change this. So if we put in a J, for example, I think we get a smiley. There we go. And there we go. And that's the result. So obviously a little bit of a one trick pony, but hopefully you guys found that useful and there are plenty of other things you can do with it. So thank you very much for watching. And if you would like to see any other tutorials, subscribe to the channel or visit hellolux.com.